Okay, everyone, welcome back to our next lecture in this module. And we're getting into the final step of this process of the uh, central dogma of molecular biology, and that is translation. So, of course, we've talked about DNA replication, where DNA is able to copy itself semi-conservatively. And then we talked about transcription, which is the production of an mRNA from reading of the DNA. And now we're going to talk about translation, and that's how the cell takes this mRNA and through its process that we're going to get into, makes a protein. So let's get right into it. When you translate an mRNA to a protein, let's talk about what making proteins is all about. So proteins are going to account for more mass than any other component of living organisms except for water. And proteins, of course, perform a wide variety of the functions in your cells. The process of translation, or basically protein synthesis, involves decoding that mRNA message into what is called a polypeptide product. Now, what's a polypeptide? Well, it's a protein. Why is it called a polypeptide? Well, the bonds between amino acids that are covalently strung together are called peptide bonds. And so you've got many peptide bonds that form a, that link many amino acids together, and that makes a protein or a many peptide bond, polypeptide, that's what it is. Amino acids, like I said, are covalently strung together in lengths ranging from 50 amino acids to maybe more than 1,000. And depending on how those amino acids are strung together, in what order, and what amino acids they are, Though that um, that uh, amino the, that protein uh, forms differently and and does different functions, but let, th we're not here to get into that today. We're just here to get into how this occurs. So how do what is the machinery that makes the protein synthesis? Well, I told you before that it is ribosomes. They are the organelle that facilitates this creation of proteins. Ribosomes are comprised of a small subunit and a large subunit. And we'll look at a picture of them in just a second. But the small subunit, they, they, when they're in the cytoplasm and they're not doing this work, they are dissociated from each other. And eventually what happens is a small subunit will find and bind to the mRNA first. And then the large subunit will join. And then the large subunit will be able to bind what are called tRNAs or transfer RNAs. And transfer RNAs are molecules that hold those amino acids one at a time together. And basically, those amino acids are what eventually will make up the protein. Like I said, ribosomes are located in the cytoplasm in prokaryotes and in the cytoplasm in eukaryotes. But they're also found on an organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum in eukaryotes. The endoplasmic reticulum um, is basically a, a place where you can create proteins and then package them up to send them out to different parts of the cell or outside of the cell, whatever it needs to happen. Um, and so it makes sense that proteins are on that organelle as well. So let's get a little bit more into these transfer RNAs. Depending on the species, there could be 40 to 60 types of transfer RNA to exist in the cytoplasm. They serve as adapters. There are specific tRNAs bind to sequences on the mRNA template, and they add the corresponding amino acid to the polypeptide chain. Therefore, the tRNAs are the molecules that actually translate the language of the RNA into the language of proteins. For each tRNA to function, it has to have the specific amino acid bonded to it. In the process called tRNA charging, each tRNA molecule gets bonded to its correct amino acid. So if it's just the transfer RNA and it doesn't have the amino acid, it really can't serve any purpose. It has to be carrying that amino acid and then eventually join up with the large subunit, which is then itself bound to the small subunit, which is bound to the mRNA. The mRNA and the tRNA match up, and the amino acid chain is start is built. So we'll get we'll get into what that looks like. But here is an overall image of what I'm showing you. Um, here is the small subunit, and here is that mRNA. And remember that mRNA is what we built from transcription. And then the large subunit would come down and bind to the small subunit after the small subunit originally bound the mRNA. And here's the tRNA, and you can notice that for every 
three nucleotides in the mRNA, there are going to be three what are called anticodons, or basically matching up nucleotides on this tRNA, because it's an RNA, it has nucleotides. And, at, and so for every three, there are three that match it, that are complementary, and that will be for what amino acid is going to be on that tRNA. And we'll get into what those codons and anticodons mean as we go on here. So that's the genetic code. What I'm hinting at is the genetic code. So let's just do a summary before we get into the genetic code. We've talked about transcription, which generates that mRNA, which is a mobile molecular copy of one or more genes, and it's got that alphabet of A, C, G, and of course U instead of T. The translation of the mRNA product converts nucleotide-based genetic information into this protein product. Remember, we're talking about translating, going from the language of nucleotides to the language of amino acids. Protein sequences consist of 20 commonly occurring amino acids. Therefore, it can be said that the protein alphabet just consists of 20 letters. So all of basically all of your proteins are some combination of those 20 amino acids. Each amino acid is defined by a three nucleotide sequence called the triplet codon. The relationship between a nucleotide codon and its corresponding amino acid is called the genetic code. Any given amino acid can be coded by more than one codon as well. And so that's sort of an important part of the genetic code, meaning that you could have more than one codon make the same amino acid. Three of the 64 codons terminate protein synthesis and release the polypeptide from the translation machinery. These are, of course, called stop codons, and here they are, UAA, UAG, and UGA. So whenever you see those codons, you would know that that makes, means stop and release the, the protein. Another codon, AUG, here in green, which codes for methionine, we'll talk about that in a second, it also has a special function. In addition to specifying the amino acid methionine, it also serves as what is called the start codon. And so whenever you see AUG, that, that's when you know we're going to start translation. Okay, the reading frame, what is called the reading frame for translation, is always set by AUG the start codon, which will be near the five prime end of the mRNA. The genetic code, like I said, is universal. With a few exceptions, virtually all species use the same genetic code for protein synthesis. It's just more powerful evidence that all life on Earth shares some common origin, some last universal common ancestor. If everything makes proteins the same way, it's pretty good evidence that whatever came first did so as well. So let's get into it a little bit more here. Just as with mRNA synthesis, protein synthesis can be divided into the three phases, initiation, elongation, and termination. Protein synthesis begins when the small subunit binds the mRNA. Then the initiator tRNA interacts with the AUG star conon and links to a special form of the amino acid methionine. Elongation begins when the large subunit binds the mRNA and small subunit. The large ribosomal subunit consists of three compartments. The A site, which binds the incoming charged tRNAs. The P site binds charged tRNAs, which carries the growing amino acid chain. And the E site releases tRNAs that have been disassociated with their amino acids so they can be recharged. Here's what this looks like. So think of the A site as the attach site, A for attach. And this is where tRNAs that are charged first attach. So here's basically what it looks like where you've got the small subunit, it binds the mRNA, and then AUG and the tRNA that carries this special form of methionine binds. Once again, AUG is called the start codon, and here's the anti-codon, UAC, binding methionine. Okay, so um, here then all of a sudden the large subunit will join and in the A site the next uh, tRNA that's charged will bind in the attached site. And so here's what it looks like as we go through this process. The A site binds G, C, G, C, A, and U. Okay, so the codon and the anticodon match up. Think of the P site 
here's the P site as the pair site. And this is where the amino acid from this, uh, this tRNA is attached to the growing chain. Okay, and so you just think of it's paired together and the polypeptide chain grows. And then as that occurs, the E site, the E site here, look, this is all the way going back to the green UAC, which was holding that methionine, then got added on to the, uh, uh, the PHE, um, and then the arg will get, arginine will get added to it. And once it's uncharged and dissociated, it goes to the E site. Think of the E site as the exit site where the tRNA is depleted, it's uncharged, whatever you want to call it, because its amino acid has been attached to the chain and it's no longer attached to it. And so it exits this whole system and it goes to be recharged, which means to get the same amino acid it was previously carrying attached to it again. Okay, and so it goes in this direction. First attach the A site, then go to the P site, get the whole polypeptide chain attached to you. Then eventually, when the next one comes along, you are uncharged. You go to the E site or the exit site and release. So let me know if that makes sense. Of course, if you got any questions on it, uh, please feel free to reach out, but we'll continue. So that was initiation and elongation. Termination of translation occurs when a stop codon, which is, of course, UAA, UAG, or UGA is encountered. When the ribosome encounters a stop codon, the growing polypeptide just gets released, and the ribosome subunits, the large and small, dissociate and leave the mRNA. And after many ribosomes have completed translation, the mRNA gets degraded so the nucleotides can be reused in another transcription reaction. And so usually when you're producing a protein from an mRNA, you don't just produce one protein copy and then call it a day. No, when you're, when you're making proteins, it's going to be many ribosomes creating many copies of that amino acid, for, for, I mean, of that protein for the most part. Okay, so let's take a look at this video, and hopefully it gives you a clearer idea of what this looks like. When the, when the RNA, RNA copy, copy is complete, complete it, snakes it snakes out into, into the, the outer part, part of the cell. cell. There's that and mRNA. A display of choreography. All, All components, components of a molecular, of a molecular machine, machine lumped together, together around the RNA. There's Don't a small subunit, large subunit. It translates, it translates the genetic, genetic information in the RNA into, into a string of amino acids that will, that will become a protein. protein. In red there, you can Special see the protein being made. The green, the green triangles bring, bring each amino acid to the ribosome. ribosome. The amino acids are the small red tips attached to the transfer molecules. There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids. Each transfer molecule carries a three-letter code that is matched with the RNA in the machine. Now we come to the heart of the process. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. The code, the code for each amino acid is read off, off three, three letters at a time, and matched, matched to three, three corresponding letters on the transfer, transfer molecules. When the, when the right transfer, transfer molecule plugs in, the amino acid it carries is added, is added to the growing protein, protein chain. And it's added Again, in the P site. You are watching this in real time. And after, and after a few, few seconds, seconds, the assembled protein starts, starts to emerge from the ribosome. ribosome. Ribosomes can make any kind of protein. It just depends what genetic message you feed in on the RNA. In this case, the end product is hemoglobin. The cells in our bone marrow churn out a hundred trillion molecules of it per second. And as a result, our muscles, brain, and all the vital organs in our body receive the oxygen they need. Okay, and so you could see at the end there how that red protein molecule was moving along and it was folding up on itself. And that's actually a feature of proteins is that because the amino acids have basic some properties where some of them will be attracted to water and some of them won't be attracted to water, they fold up in various forms and those forms give them their specific functions. And that uh, polypeptide chain that was just produced can either be a protein on its own 
or it can join other proteins and form larger structures and become proteins that way. Okay, so let's practice an exam question, a typical type of exam question. So I might give you a single strand of DNA, and of course I would put 5 prime and 3 prime, and then there's a whole bunch of letters. Now this first direction says replicate this DNA, which all that means is just write the complementary strand. Of course, DNA, replication, okay? And so the first thing, I've already given you the answer here, but the first thing you would need to make sure is that since this was given in 5 prime to 3 prime, you need to make sure that your answer is in 3 prime to 5 prime. Of course, that because DNA is an anti-parallel molecule. Okay, and then it's basically just knowing it's DNA, so we're going to use A's and T's instead of U's. And of course, uh, G's and C's and A's and T's go together. And so this should be your answer. CCG, GGC, TTA, AAT, and so on. Okay, and so hopefully by now that's pretty simple, um, but let's keep going. So here is basic, this is basically your answer from the first one. And then I would say transcribe. So, okay, we're thinking about what transcription was. Well, transcription was same language as same language. So I'm going from DNA to RNA, messenger RNA. Okay, transcribe the template strand from the strand of DNA into mRNA. And so, okay, I've already said this is the template strand. And once again, the template strand is in 5 prime to 3 prime. Um, and so let's transcribe it. Now, if you wanted to get cute with it, and I, I suggest that you, you would do this, save yourself some time, but of course don't have to. What did we say about the template strand and of course the non-template strand? They are complementary. And if if you are using a template strand and basically making something that's complementary in mRNA and just changing the T's to use, well, you could basically copy your answer and wherever you find a T, put a U. See how that works? It works exactly the way that it should. It's just now you're producing an mRNA. Or you could just go through and, and do it again. But this is the answer. It was 5 prime to 3 prime in the template strand, so make sure your answer is 3 prime to 5 prime. And of course, we're making an mRNA, so wherever you see T's, you put an A. Wherever you see an A, you put a U, okay? And so that is uh, obviously the part of the question that works with producing the mRNA or doing transcription. Now, lastly, we're getting to the new stuff. So first of all, this may or may not be part of the question, but let's, let's do it. Uh, when, it might not be part of the exam, but let's do it now. So you've just made your mRNA, correct? So here's what you wrote out, 3 prime all the way down to 5 prime, and you subtracted the T's and put U's. Um, let's find how many codons. Now, I told you that there were the codons are three letters at a time. So all you've got to do is parse this out into three letter, uh, basically, chunks. And what you find is there are 10 codons here, 10 codons, GGC, AAU, GCG, CCA, AAG, GGU, and so on. 10 codons, okay, 10 codons. Then the question would say, what would be the amino acid sequence translated from the mRNA? Now, very likely, this is the only, on the exam, this is the next part of the question. I wouldn't ask you how many codons. This is just to get you thinking on how you would start to answer this part of the question. You want to separate it into codons. So we've done that in the previous slide, but what you should do next is flip this answer into 5 prime to 3 prime. And so now you've got 5 prime AUG, AAU, UAU, because this is the direction in which the mRNA gets read on the ribosome. Okay, this is the direction that the tRNAs will begin to translate it. And so once we've done that, we can go to the next part where on the exam you will be given one of these. Uh, basically, it's just a way to decipher the genetic code. So use the supply genetic code table to figure this out. Now, here is the way in which you do this. There's the first letter of the codon, the second letter of the codon, and the third letter of the codon. So we go down to the first codon, A-U-G. Well, here's A, U, and then G come across, and here's A-U-G. And we, of course, know that A-U-G binds for methionine, or in this case, you can put start. I would accept methionine or start because methionine is the uh, is the 
amino acid that's encoded for AUG, but it's also known as the start codon. It's a special form of methionine. Okay, so let's do the next one, AAU. Okay, here's A, gotta go over to A and then find U, AAU, ASN. So then I put ASN. It's not important for you to know the names of the protein, uh, of the amino acids here. Um, next one, UAU, UAU, tyrosine, TYR. Okay, so I put TYR. Next one, CCC. Here's C, 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 pro. Okay, pro. And so on. We'll do one more, UGG. Here's U, G, G, tryptophan, TRP. Okay, and so that's the way that you do it all the way until you get to the last one, which is CGG. I'm sorry, no, all the way until you get to the last one, which is UAA, UAA. And you know it's the last one because it's a stop. Notice that there's another code on here, but it's actually not a, going to be trans, uh, it's actually not going to be translated because you have reached the stop codon, UAA. So as soon as you find one that encodes for one of these three stop codons, do not tell me what the next amino acid is because we've reached the stop. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You're going through all these, all these amino acids, all these codons that code for amino acid, but eventually you get to one that's one of these stop codons. You just put stop. Once you put stop, you don't have to continue. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so let's do a little bit more practice. So here's the DNA uh, strand and eventually you would have to make the mRNA. This is pretty much exactly what it would look like, plus you would have the chart there on the last one. So to make the, DNA, the, the mRNA, we are what? Doing transcription. And we also know that wherever there's an A, we'll put a U instead of a T. And so it'll look something like that. U, 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 C, U, U, G, U, U, A, A, G, and so on. And then if we were to go on, eventually we would find um, that AUG, of course, means start or methionine. UUU is feline. Okay, and so it's basically, once you get to the mRNA, it's pretty simple just using your chart. It's just very important that you don't make any mistakes uh, doing your A's and U's and G's and C's. Okay, here's the next one. Let's do the mRNA. So it would be AUG. Notice that that makes sense. A to T, A to U, G to C. For a CCC, it'll be GGG. For CAT, it'll be GUA and so on. So that's what that looks like. Then you would go on back to your chart, go to AUG, of course, being methionine or start, GGB being glycine, valine, asinine. Okay, and so that as we go on, eventually you would find UAA as a stop. Notice for both of these last two questions, I didn't put things past the stop codon. Okay, and so that's it. And I hope everything's making sense to you. I hope you don't have uh, too many confusions. Of course, if you do, let me know. Be sure to figure that out for you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.